Welcome to Simple JavaScript App with Tokyo EdTech. That is me. Today we're going to learn how to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit using JavaScript. Fascinating stuff. So before we begin, let me just give a quick shout out to my members. I got a lot of members here to thank. Um, thank you so much. Six months or more, up to six months. Everybody, I appreciate all your support. Let's get started. JavaScript. JavaScript is a language that is kind of been designed to be used on the web. It's, of course, it is expanded. It's used almost everywhere. But its original use was in web pages, and this is where you would see it most as, as a user, for sure. So what we need to do is we need to create an HTML page, and we're going to put our JavaScript into that HTML page. Now, there are other ways to do these things. You can put it separately. I'm going to put it together just to keep it simple. And this is something I've been doing with my students, and uh, hopefully they are enjoying it. Now, if you haven't seen my introduction to HTML tutorial, check that out first, because it goes over a lot of what I'm about to do. So first, I'm going to create a simple HTML page, and I need to have my opening and closing HTMLs. Now you notice how there's no color coding and this is like red. I'm using something called Genie here to write my my code. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And you can see there's a bunch of stuff here. So on my desktop, I've created a folder called Celsius to Fahrenheit because that's what this does. So I'm gonna call this, I'll just call it Celsius to Fahrenheit. What the heck, uh, Fahrenheit. That's a hard one to spell. And notice it is a .html file. Even though we're talking about JavaScript, we're gonna make an HTML file here. Okay, so now you can see that there is some color coding. Now, my HTML page has a, oops, has a head. And that head will have a uh, title. So I'm gonna give it a title. And this is gonna be Celsius to Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, bye. I'll put that later, Fahrenheit. And then we're gonna have a body. And that's where our content is going to go. And I'm going to make an H1, which is a heading, a large heading. And I'm going to call it C. I'll call it Celsius to Fahrenheit. Let's not be lazy. To fair and height by at Tokyo EdTech. That is me, EdTech. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command S or Control S, depending on what kind of computer you're using. And you see now this is turned white, so I know it's saved. So now I can go over here and open it, but I think I should be able to click this and it should open in your browser. Now, if your computer's not set up that way, you might have to go in and go to, I'm gonna make sure we can find it here. I'm on Linux, but you should be able to maybe open a new window or you should be able to find it on your computer. You might have to go to the desktop and actually click on it. But once it's opened once, it's pretty easy to do. So you'll see here, we've got our HTML code, we've got Celsius to Fahrenheit, that's where this comes from here. We've got Celsius to Fahrenheit by at Tokyo EdTech. That comes from here. Again, if you didn't watch my intro to HTML video and you don't know what this is, stop now, go watch that, and come back. Okay, so as I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now I've lived in Asia, I've lived in Europe, I've lived abroad probably a little over half my life now, and I still have not gotten used to Celsius. I'm sorry, I, I know 30 is warm, I know 40 is really hot, I know 50 is like, yeah, not good. Um, but beyond that, I don't really know a lot. So anyway, I need help converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some labels, I'm gonna put Celsius, and I'm gonna put Fahrenheit, and I might put, yeah, you know, we don't really use this as much anymore, the bold tags, but I could put bold here just to make it look nice, I guess. Um, now you see how Genie is doing a little bit of autocomplete for me, which works out well sometimes, but you can see how I've, I've had to delete a few things. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna come over here and refresh, and you'll see something a little bit weird. Now you notice how even though over here it's the next line, over here it's not, and this is a little H the way HTML works. So I'm gonna put a BR tag, and again, this is not a an HTML video. If you don't know what this means, watch the other video. So I'm just gonna check that. And now I've got the basic HTML set up for this page. Now, if I'm gonna be converting stuff, actually let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you can see it easier in the video. Um, if I'm gonna be converting stuff, I need to have a place to input the information. I need to have a place to put the information out. And then I need to have some way of actually you know, starting the calculation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little text entry box here. 
text input box. I'm going to put a text input box here. And I'm going to put a button down here. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just before the break, because I want it to be on this line, here's what I do. I'm going to do input, because I'm going to be inputting information, type equals quote text. There are different types of inputs. Um, we're doing text today. And actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stop there for a second, and I'm gonna save and just see if that works. Okay, so that gives us a little box that I can actually go ahead and type information into, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now I can just go ahead and copy that, and I can put that here, save it, and then I can refresh it, and now I've got a text box here as well. Now I can I can put information into a text box or I can display information with the text box. That's how I'm going to do it today. And then finally, as I said, I'm going to need a button. And I'm going to put a button here. And I'm going to say call this convert uh, C. I'm going to pull arrow C to F. I'm going to save it. I'm going to open it. I'm going to refresh it. I mean. And here is basically what my app is going to look like. It's not pretty. Uh, we're not doing any CSS here, but we've got all of the elements that we need. We need this text box, we need this text box. Now, of course, if you know a little HTML, I didn't have to use a text box here. I could have used div, there's different things I could do, but I'm just gonna use text boxes. And then I've got my little button here, it says convert C to F. Now, of course, when I click this, nothing happens. You know, I can put 100 and click, nothing happens uh, because we haven't coded it yet. So. First things first, you need, you need to understand a little bit about the way coding works, particularly in, well, just basically in any language, but in a web page as well, is if we want to refer to things, um, we need to give things an ID. Sometimes you might call it a name, but uh, we're going to be using I, the ID, I guess, property here. So we need to give this an ID that tells us what it does. We need to give this an ID that tells us what it does. So what I'm gonna put here is I wanna put uh, ID equals. Now, here's what I told my students. I said, look, you could put box one and you could put ID equals box two. Um, so you can see these are unique. So names or IDs should be unique. So only one per page. Um, so these are unique, but they're not really meaningful. They don't really tell us much about what these things do. So what I told my students to do is do the following. So text, because it's a text input type, and this is Celsius. And then this one's going to be text fair and height. Fahrenheit's hard to spell. Um, I had to look that one up. So anyway, let me bring that back over. Let me just scoot this over a bit so we can see everything. Now you can see how the uh, elements move you know, based on what we're doing. So yours, depending on your screen size, could look like that. It could look like this doesn't really matter at this point. So it's very clear that this box is where we're going to put Celsius, and this box is where we're going to see some Fahrenheit. Okay. So now that we have that, okay, and again, if I'm going too fast, just pause and go in return. You can copy the code here. So we've created some input boxes. We've created, they're called, they're text types. We've given them unique and meaningful names. Okay, so there's only one text Celsius, there's only one text Fahrenheit. And we've got a little button that says convert C to F. Okay. Now this is so far, this is all HTML. We haven't done any JavaScript at this point. So now what we're gonna do is get into our JavaScript. So down here, I'm gonna put a script tag. Now I could put it up here and probably actually should, but we're gonna put it down here just to make our lives easier. So now if you've never programmed in JavaScript before, this might be a little bit, you know, complicated for you, but I'm assuming that you've done at least some coding or, you know, can follow along. So when we write some code, typically we put code into blocks called functions or sometimes called methods. And what each function or method does is usually just does one thing really, really well. So what we have to do is we need to create a function to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna go ahead and type function so, and I'm going to call it, I'm literally going to call it that, convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now you notice how I'm doing the capitalization. 
Um, so I have a small c here, capital C. So I've capitalized each internal word, but not the first one. Okay. So this is called camel casing, and you'll see this, this pattern here. So one thing you got to know about JavaScript and most programming languages is that capitalization counts. So if I had a function with a small c and a function with, function with a big c, they're two different functions. So the computer's really, really picky about that sort of thing. Same thing over here. If I've got a capital C here or a small c, that makes a big difference. So to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, so for example, let's say Celsius equals 100. And I'm going to use C here. And to find Fahrenheit, we say Fahrenheit equals, and here's the formula. It's 9 divided by 5 times C plus 32. Now I could put this in extra parentheses just to make it clear. So it is 9 divided by 5 multiplied by Celsius plus 32. This is the formula to take Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay. Now, we've basically just assigned a few values. And again, I'm assuming you know what variables are. I could put var here, uh, uh, but I think it's optional. Again, I'm not an expert on JavaScript. This is something I'm still kind of learning myself, to be honest. Um, so let's go ahead and just run this. Let's, I've, I've saved it, and let's just go ahead and refresh. Now if I click this, nothing happens. Um, you know, I haven't done anything yet. Um, I've just entered some, I've just, I've got some numbers in memory at this point. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and see if this is working. So I need to put this value, this F, which should be 212, into this box. Okay. So what I got to do is the following. Document get element by ID. Note the capitalization, capital E, capital B, capital I. If you don't have that, it's not going to work. Quote. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to access this element. Okay. Now we gave this element an ID. So I can just copy that. Put quotes in parentheses. So I said document, get element by ID, text Fahrenheit. So I want to do something with this box. This box has a value and we're going to set it equal to F. Okay, so let me go over that one more time. So document is this entire page. We're getting an element on this page by its ID. In this case, it's text Fahrenheit. Text Fahrenheit has some, what's called a value. It's an attribute. And we're going to set that equal to F, which we just calculated here. Okay. So again, I'm going to go, I've saved it. I'm going to refresh it. And I'm going to click this button. And you'll see that nothing happens. Okay, this is to be expected. Now I asked, actually, literally, like on Friday, I did this lesson with my students, and I said, well, "Why doesn't this work?" And somebody, uh, one of my students, she raised her hand. She said, "Well, you didn't connect the button to the function," which is exactly right. So there's no code here to tell this button to call what we say call this function. Okay, so to do that. We do something called on click. Okay, so what this means is when I click here, put an equal sign, couple quotes here, I want to call this function. I want this function to happen. So I'm going to copy that, put that in there, and I'm going to put a little semicolon at the end. You may notice I put semicolons at the end of everything here. So I'm going to go ahead, I've saved it. I'm going to refresh it. Don't forget to refresh, because if you don't refresh, it's not going to work. I'm going to click this, and I should see 212 there. And there we go. Okay. So far, so good. So now, you know, in our code, we've hard-coded 100. But what we need to do is we need to pull the number from here. Okay. Now, it's basically, it's the exact same thing I just did. But I want to pull the number from text Celsius. Celsius. Now this was a little confusing, especially for beginners. So in this case, I'm taking the value that's here and putting it into C. In this line, I'm taking the value of F, putting it into the value of this box. Okay. So now I'm going to save it again. I'm going to refresh. 
And in here, I'm going to put 0 and I'm put convert. And that gave us 32. That makes sense because 0 times 9 fifths is 0, plus 32 is 32. That's the freezing point of water. Um, if I do 100 and hit convert, that gives me 212. Okay. So that is, that's it. That's, that's your first basic, very basic, uh, web app. And, but as I, literally, as I told my students the other day, I said, everything that you've learned here is basically the foundation of, of coding. You, you've learned all, quite a lot about coding here. Um, first thing is that objects, in this case, these text boxes, need to have a name. It needs to be unique so that it's different from the other boxes. And it needs to be meaningful so that we know what our information is coming from and what it's supposed to represent. Okay, so again, if I call this box one and box two, it would work. The computer doesn't know the difference, but it just makes our coding a lot more, you know, hard to understand. Um, we have here on click, this is called an event. So in, it's called event driven programming, some event happens and then a function is called, and usually it's called a callback, um, something happens. So I always tell my students, you know, all programming comes down to the concept of if this, then that. So in this case, if I click on this particular button, it's going to call this function, which means it's gonna jump down to this function and it's gonna do the code inside that particular function. So now we have some variables. In this case, I did C, I did F. I could have called it Celsius, I could have called it Fahrenheit. Uh, again, variables should be unique, names should be meaningful. And uh, just there's some rules about variable naming, like don't put spaces in them. Uh, but for now, just let's not worry about that. And then you can see here, this comes down to how JavaScript interacts with the elements of a web page. So we've given it an ID, so because we want to access it. So here we say the variable C is going to be set to the value in this element called text Celsius. So we take that value, pop it into C, do some calculations, take that value, put it into this text box, this element. Okay, so the order here is very important how that works. Um, I think if you can get this basic concept down, you know, at this point you should be able to code almost any type of conversion program, you know, with, with numbers and things, as long as you keep remembering that you need, not to go, you need, uh, you know, unique names and you need to, you know, have unique variables and all that sort of thing. Now, again, if you haven't done any coding before, you know, some of the, the way that I did this is probably a little confusing, but hopefully you have somewhat of a little bit of a coding background and this makes a little bit of sense. So anyway, um, that's about it. Now, if you're wondering what to do next, what I would probably do is just as practice, is I would add an extra button called convert F to C and a function here called convert Fahrenheit to Celsius and see if you can get that to work. And uh, if you don't know the formula, actually I don't know it either, um, you can either derive it from here or you can, uh, yeah, you can look it up, you can Google the formula. That would be your next challenge uh, if I were you. Okay, so again, uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in, I appreciate it. I hope you found this uh, helpful. I know it was a little fast, but uh, it's just kind of an introductory lesson to get you used to JavaScript, where it goes, and how to connect JavaScript to the different elements uh, on the HTML page, and especially buttons, because that's super duper important. Okay, so anyway, have a great day, night, whatever, wherever you're at, and as I like to say, keep on coding. Take care.